This is Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, Richard. Boy, do you look lovely today. Thank you. (laughs) Well, you look lovely every day, but you know. No, it's, I have had this dress for, it's literally rainbow, like rainbow. I've had it for three months and I decided to wear it today. And my first client ended up telling me at the end, she goes, I asked for one sign before I came here. And it was, I asked for a rainbow from my grandfather. <laughs> wow. And you walked up. <laughs> there you You're walk. wearing a rainbow. Wearing a rainbow. I'm That's... like, that was a sign. She goes, absolutely. That was the only sign I asked for. That's so adorable and, uh, and lovely. Um, how was your Halloween, dear? Um, Day of the Dead, Day of the Jennifer. Ah, the Day of the Dead. So Monday night, I had a, I had an event. Yeah. Um, excuse me for one second. Let me put this on. You bleep the bleeping. For those driving in their car, that little sound was Jennifer's computer talking to her. Yeah, I thought I had all my notifications off. Um, I had an event Monday night at my girlfriend Jess Calva's house. And it was a beautiful, every year she does something to celebrate the Day of the Dead. And so this year we did it on the first and she has the most magnificent altar. I posted the altar, uh, a video of it this morning. I think, wow. It just, she had all of the rest of, like all the food of all of her relatives. There was 20 of us. And then each person um, went around the table and, and, gave a memory, their favorite memory of somebody that has passed. And it was just beautiful. And so each one of us did that. And then we went into a different room and I read everyone. We drew names out of a hat. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. It was really cool. And then Halloween, I spent it with some friends. I was really tired on Halloween. I Um, I would think so. And then last night we had a sold out at Uncorked in manhattan beach so i read 22 people last night i have an event tonight tomorrow i get to read all of the los angeles kings their wives <laughs> what what that's yep. great how cool is that yeah, so that should be fun it's just non-stop and then i have a poker tournament for a charity benefit you know whatever you do don't play poker with a medium because you know they can read your cards they're right over your shoulder what the heck we're gonna see how it works <laughs> very good well that's exciting you've been doing so much that's so cool and i'm you know people f- reaching out and talking to loved ones that's such a lovely idea to do a day of the dead about loved ones you know and to r- have a memory about them and talk about them it literally brings them into the room it was so my heart was so full when i was there and i i you know i've been i've been doing it every year for like the last five years at our house you know, and yeah. I just, it truly is such a gift for me to see because I didn't, here I work with the dead, but I didn't, and I try to honor my dad and I try to honor my loved ones, but I never thought of it like that. You know, it was interesting. Well, so, it is interesting also because the more you talk to people on the flip side, the more you realize they are not dead. That, you know, that process of going off stage. Just one of many times they've done that. They've gone off stage many times. We've all done it before. It's a remembering because we always ask people when they get to the flip side who was there to greet you. And it's like they're not surprised by the question. Right. You know, it's something that, well, speaking of the not so very dead, uh, our friend Luana, who is our moderator of our class on the flip side, does Uh, she have anybody she wants to talk to or about? There's already somebody here, but hold on. So again, not trying to judge it. Let me explain some. So Sandy, as I had an event on Saturday night, uh-huh. and Sunday I was coming home, and Matthew Perry died that night. Mm-hmm. Sunday I was coming home. Freddie and I were to because I had to work. I had clients all day, and I got Matthew Perry, and I got the chills. And I'm like, wait a second. And he's like, I'll see you later. And I thought, okay, whatever that meant. And then my first client actually knew him. Oh, wow. I knew him. And I'm like, how could this happen so quickly? Right. 
And then the next day on Halloween, I'm talking to my clients whose son um, passed away and Matthew shows up again. I'm like, did you know Matthew? She goes, no, but my son who's over there did. He went and got him because I have Matthew. They, I'm like, what? She goes, yeah, they worked on a couple of TV shows together. So Matthew showed up. He showed up again. You know, he actually worked with the person that passed away. He worked, they both worked on a show together on a couple episodes. And so I'm like, okay, I'm not judging it. And then I was somewhere yesterday where, where I, was, I had an appointment and he shows up again. And I'm like, okay, this is just work. Why are you showing up again? And he goes, talk to her, tell her that you just talked to me. And so I told the person that was in front of me and she goes, oh, you know, Annette, like Inez Kopitar, who's the, who, it was a client of mine, Chandler, Chandler, Matthew Perry. He was, he was actually at their wedding 10 years ago. Wow. And she, she owned the place that we were at, that I was at. And so I'm like, this is just, you know. And so then today, all of a sudden, we're just about ready to go. And he shows up again. And I'm like, what? Is he allowed? Does he just get a, <laughs> like, does he get a free pass? Well, let's ask Lou. Let's yeah. ask Luana what that's about. Yes. But what's interesting, though, I have lots of questions, too, is the fact that. Um, OK, show me again. Hold on. Get, OK, it goes back to not judging it. You know, we've talked about this, right? And when new people go, you know, newly people that go over there, they don't have boundaries. So they just come in whenever they whatever they want. But he had some really important things to say to this other couple yesterday that I related a message to. And they're like, oh, they couldn't, you know, they were so grateful because they knew him so well. So yes, he is here. So you go ahead and ask the question since. All right. Well, first I want to ask Luana, what's, what's that about? I mean, was he standing by to come and talk to us or, or why does he want to talk to us today? He likes what we're doing. He has a lot of friends that I'm probably going to end up be, I'm going to end up talking to. And he just wanted me to get that's so funny. Thank you. He just wanted me to get used to it. Well, what can I say other than we're honored for you to show up and talk to us? So yeah. what do you what do you want to say? Uh, you know, I, I'm going to ask you the same questions I ask everybody. So who was there to greet you when you crossed over? He said he has a lot of people over there. People that I wouldn't necessarily know, but people that along his journey, um, they lost their life to addiction. And I know he just, he just went like this with his book. He goes, well, if you would have read my book, you'd have all that information. <laughs> yes, you did. You wrote a book about your life and your journey. I just, I happened to see a little bit of it the other day. The one uh, thing he does want people to know is that, um, okay, you tell me, hold on. He didn't have any drugs or alcohol. He it felt like he had, he was he worked out or did something and he was detoxing from like you know how you, when you sweat too much or whatever. Yeah. It dealt with his heart. It dealt with his heart. I felt like he had an aneurysm or he had a heart attack before. So he Matthew, do you want to show Jennifer what you were doing just prior? What was the exercise and and pickleball? He showed me pickleball. That did you not know that Jennifer? No. No. Okay. So that is. His uh the the his partner who we played pickleball with came out and said that they spent like you know whatever they did like an hour of game or whatever amount of time you play pickleball for and he was like you know coming down from that so you're absolutely right so but Matthew uh so was it did your heart give out was it a heart attack or 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 what what was that about he couldn't go to sleep he wanted to go to sleep and he couldn't go to sleep so. He went in the jacuzzi and he said that it was just, you know, a little bit of dehydration, a little bit of, of working because of working out. Yeah, and I understand. All right. Let me go back to the question about who greeted you. I know that you had a close friend who was an actor who passed away. And I just want to ask about him. About River Phoenix, not River Phoenix. but Yes, that is his name. And that is who I was thinking of. Yeah, I was just okay. going to ask. So have you had a chance to talk? Go ahead, Jennifer. I'm, I'm interrupting. No, no, I just, he showed me, he's like River Phoenix. He's a great communicator, which I do love about. <laughs> okay, because he wanted to call him Chandler. Um, but he just said, he goes, River Phoenix. I'm like, I, 
and I don't know how they, but yeah. Well, I was okay. Well, let me he ask said you. About- they laughed. They he said that they laughed hysterically, like, "What the fuck?" Like out of all the times he could have died, right? He dies this way. He's like, it was embarrassing. He goes, "I would have at least like maybe you know." <laughs> He's showing me next to James Dean, like being on a Harley. Like that would have been a cool way to go, you know. He was, a, he was on a Porsche. He was in a Porsche. But Whatever. yeah, no, I get it. Whatever. Yeah, more dramatic. But let's ask you about that. So, what was that like when you saw River, your friend, your pal? Love. He said absolute love, and laughter. And Massey, would you do me a favor, just because we can? Can you bring River forward? He's like, I have to go get him. <laughs> Okay, I don't rec- I, like. I don't know who River Phoenix is. I feel like he's here. That's fine, River. Uh, uh, you're probably not familiar with what we're doing, or maybe you are. But we talk to people on the other side. We try not to be invasive any any way, but we like to talk to people about their journey or what it was like. I know you were friends with Matthew. I know that you guys did a movie together at, at the start of your career, and I know that he was devastated by the loss. Have you been to visit him while he was still on the planet? Did you come and visit? Go ahead, Jennifer. What he no, he showed, me, he showed me the other guy, too, that greeted him was the guy that, the comedian, the guy that, um, Gary? Gary, guy, Mark, uh, Gary uh, Shandling. Yeah. The golfer. Yeah, I don't know if they knew. Yeah, but, okay. So, he, and, and so River's showing you Gary Shandling as somebody who greeted him or, or was hanging out with him? No. no. No, no, Gary, no. So the guy that played golf, the one that we talked to that passed over that said yeah. he was, what, what was that like? Was that amusing or? <laughs> you just said, dude, it could have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me ask you, River, because I can. Who greeted you when you crossed over? Felt like his grandparents. Felt like his grandparents. Okay. Yeah. He also had a friend that died like right around the same time. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure. So let me ask you a a simple question in terms of your brother who is on the planet. I met him at one point and and is an actor, a very terrific actor. What's your observation about your brother? I mean, you have a sister and I I always knew. I always knew he'd do it. I always knew he'd do it. He do didn't know. Do, it. Anywhere? do you do you work with yeah, him? He, he um he had a lot to live up to, he said. <laughs> He's laughing about it with him. But I always knew he always knew. He always knew that he could that he would do it. He'd be big. So if you can when he was alive. Go ahead. When, he, when he was alive. When he was but I mean, since you've been on the flip side, have you been able to show up? to him in dreams or is he aware of your presence or is he not no he's aware he's definitely aware okay and and generally when do you show up to see somebody are they because they're are they stressed or when they're sleeping or what he showed me jim carrey channel you know how jim carrey channeled you know with one of the movie one of the movies that he just did oh okay yeah i don't know but yeah Um, but hold on he knows because he asks him to be there he does know so he asked, oh, he asked, he asked to have that. Okay. And uh, Matthew, I didn't mean to uh, interrupt your interview, but I just, because I knew that you guys were friends. I knew you did a movie together. Um, and River, were you able to stop by and see Matthew at all during his life or or no? In the beginning, it was very painful, but in the beginning, um, painful for Matthew. Um, but in the beginning, Matthew, like, Matthew talked to him. Matthew, that's why Matthew did it. But like, I know he's like, stop talking about me in third person. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, who's in the room, is expressing to me that his addiction, part of that addiction was getting him to get out of his head and get out of his mind to connect. Right. And then he realized he didn't need it to connect. I know, Matthew, that there's a lot of people who have been crediting you with saving their lives. And through the going to AA and helping them and helping them get over their addictions. Let me ask you, because we're aware of the fact that people have a higher consciousness while we're here on the planet. So 
were you how are you able to affect that kind of change in people was it just empathy compassion or were you meant to do it just be the change that you want to see with anything he says so hold on i have the chills give me a second I know he's laughing at me. He's like, it is kind of cool to talk to me, right? <laughs> it's, like, it's just so weird for me, even as a medium, even with people that knew him. Like I had no idea that my girlfriend, that he, that Chandler was at his wedding. Like there, it was just so, it's not yeah. mad. But anyway, he's just like, come on, it's not that bad. Hold on. He goes, he's actually referencing our work already. Like your, the feelings that, okay, thank you. He had a gift, I feel, I'm getting, of knowing who was in trouble, of knowing who he needed to help. And um, oh, he knows Jennifer's really sad, Aniston. Um, and like feeling people that are sad about his passing, he was able to feel what people were going through, why he was here. And that's why I think he was, util he was so helpful with other people because not only did he go through it, but he was also, he can figure out like he wanted all his friends to be saved. You well, know? let me ask you a question. I think that might help people, which is now that you're on the flip side, are you aware of previous lifetimes that you've had? If any, He says, yes, but it's too long of a list to go through. No, no. And I don't want you to go through it. But the point is, yeah. you're aware of previous lifetimes you've had. And when people get back home, they too become aware of previous lifetimes they've had and previous connections with different people. Yes. And so uh, at some point, if you could talk about friends, I know, you know, people are missing you and talking about you because of the show. Um, and maybe if you could just talk about that experience. I mean, I know, I know, as River knows, as Jennifer knows, you know, it's a, it's makeup and hair and a set best, and dialogue and all that stuff. The best experience of his life. It created the best, you know, with a few minor fights, he's saying, but it created the best group of friends. And I really couldn't have, other than all, <laughs> other than being, all the toxicity he said <laughs> i really did have the best life i couldn't have asked for anything more because i wish my i wish my brain would have worked a little bit differently but then i don't because it's all part of the experience it's all part of the play but it's what he signed up for what he signed up for and if you could access that just for a moment in terms of signing up for this kind of a journey is was it did you sign up for all of it or just parts of it or what parts of it were i wasn't aware of any of it <laughs> but Obviously. yeah but yeah but hold on he signed up for being a martyr a victim a creator a romantic <laughs> hopeless <laughs> hold on lover of animals lover of all kinds of all walks of life A teacher that came much later. And just someone that had to come to terms with his own coloring, he says. So I don't know if, I don't know what he means by that, but. Let's ask him, what do you mean by your own coloring? <laughs> just, he's making fun of my dress being colorful, but. um. Oh, but I so let me if I may like a painter adding paint to a canvas, because every lifetime is a different color and a different paint. Okay, you're tapping your nose. That means I'm on the money. I and you know in a session that I did with hypnosis, the my guide was saying you know Rich and I looked at a big white canvas and we said where's what's the paint where where's it going to go? And after each lifetime, you step back and look at it and go, eh, I need a little bit more red over here. I need more blue. I need more peace. I need more love. I need more whatever. And so the, are you talking about the coloring of all your lifetimes or the coloring of just this lifetime or is it all the same? This lifetime was pretty effing colorful. 
Is there any messages you want to? I listen, I Hank is there. Go ahead. A lot more color. He goes. I think I. He's like. I think. Thank you. I think I kind of mastered all the colors. He said. <laughs> Do you want to say anything to Hank Azaria, who came out and very eloquently talked about your saving his life? And uh, any messages for Hank? Hank has shown up in our podcast before; he doesn't even know it. But Hank, and Hank's alive. Hank's okay. alive. He's a care. You know, he plays Apu in The Simpsons, and he was a very. Oh. Uh, so he's saying that Hank did it himself. I was just an example of what you could do. Okay. Very good. And he said that, um, Hank's got this. He's going to live, live to be like 102. So if, if let's, two things. Somebody tuning into this podcast is going to be saying, these people are, tr are trying to profit off, of, I don't know how we're doing that, but profit yeah. off the death of a celebrity. What do you have to say to those people? I'm a person too. And... I mean, the messages that I've given out about him was actually my pro bono work. It wasn't like I was working on a case and he came through. Oh, so wow. it's not like I was getting paid to talk, to have someone talk to him or to, right. he, he goes, I bombarded her during <laughs> a discussion. And then, then I was like, wait, you know, wait a second. You're so, I had no idea that this person's son knew him. Yeah. Right? Thank you. That totally answers my question. Absolutely, irrevocably. The second part of it is, what do you want to tell people who are suffering right now that need to help with addictions, whether it's alcohol or drugs? What can they do to, to change that or turn it around? He's so funny still. He's like, don't go to, he goes, use the buddy system for the jacuzzi, sober or not. Because I did ask him a question. I said, hey, could you have been saved? And he goes, well, we would never, we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be having this conversation. I think you had an assistant who was there with you and he, he had gone out to, I don't know, he picked up something or. Yeah, so I don't know. That's Any message you want to give to that person who must be feeling a little bit awful about uh, leaving you to fall asleep in a jacuzzi? Yeah, that's not how I died. He he died before he hit the water. That's really what it feels like. It wasn't like okay. he, that was the after effect. But. Um, so your heart stopped and you, you checked out of the planet. You left your body and the body slipped into the water. And it's like, he, he's so funny. He jumped out. He's like, no. <laughs> no. Wow. No, not this. <laughs> not this way. But, you know, we had conversation with Bob Saget about that, the great comedian who accidentally bumped his head on a ridiculous. That Bob. So it was Bob, not Jerry. Oh, oh not Gary Sa Shandling. Okay, so Bob Saget was somebody who bumped his head. Hey, they might have known each other. I don't That's know. That's why I don't know. It's... Of course, he says, of course we did. We do. Okay. Yeah. Anything Bob Saget wants to say? We've talked to him after he crossed over. He's. He's pushing. He's like, now he won the, the award for the dumbest. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. Listen, but I when know. Jennifer and I <laughs> talk to people on the flip side a lot, you've got to laugh. It's certainly the way we leave the stage. Some people trip and fall off the stage. That's just what happens. You know, other people take linger forever. They're, they're there on the side of the stage for a long time. He keeps showing me, he keeps showing me, you know, Jennifer Aniston. He shows me Jason Bateman. I'm sure he had a huge, he had... A lot of influence over Jason Bateman. Friends of his. Yeah. And Courtney Cox. Like he, the love is so real between all of them. Is and there it, something that you can do or say to them? I mean, on your own, is there a way you can sneak by their house or enter their dreams or tap on their shoulder? What would you do? He says he, he's not going to do it just yet because he loves all the stories they're telling him. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's he gives him the thoughts though to talk about. He goes, I keep dumping. That's so great. Oh, he keeps dumping like funny thoughts. So, like, you know, it's he at least his death, it was tragic because he's gone, but it wasn't tragic the way he died. He's saying, you know, at least eventually the hopefully the nostalgia he showed me my dad, hopefully the nostalgia will take place. 
and we'll be better. And for those trying to figure what he means, Jennifer's father came through and said, when you can move grief to nostalgia, you begin the healing process because nostalgia is funny things and sad things, whereas grief is just sad things. And if you can move grief to nostalgia, you begin the healing process. So nostalgia for, and, and the LA Times wrote an article, or New York Times, I think, might've said that your, your take on that character what, for sarcasm, and the way you delivered lines, they ever they actually went through like so many different lines you'd give and, and to say that you changed the way that people view sarcasm, you know, yeah. the, the snar- snarcasm or whatever, the, however you want to call it. Of course, you know, you have screenwriters, you have writers, you have, you know, people who put the show together. Yeah, I his, his point is, yeah, but the delivery, that was me. That was you. It was all you. What about family members? I don't really know that much, but are there, you have family members over here that you want to give a shout out to or? They know I love them. They're in for a lot of craziness. Um, He says he's talked to them. He didn't, his biggest thing of letting people know he didn't suffer. So, yeah, because of course, people just associate that that you you pass away must be related to your recovery, but you know, apparently, it's not. It's just your body didn't quite recover. Let's say, and maybe this was the year like that you were to check out. Go ahead. I, uh, it's like I was just getting my body back, like just getting everything, you know, back in shape. Order. But he, uh, yeah, hold on. He's very grateful he left a book for everyone. Oh, okay. Set me over the head with it. Jennifer, you haven't seen the book, have you? No, probably not. No. And I haven't, I know, I just happened to catch a, a you know, something about it. Yeah, it, on an, it. yeah, an interview that it, they did, like uh, one of the late night people. Things did. talked about it. Well, that would be something for everybody tuning in. If you really want to hear what Matthew has to say about his life and his journey, it's in the book. Yes, right? he's also, yes, but he's also saying, you know, today is every day should be the day of the dead. <laughs> Have fun, honor them with your snarkiness. If there's anybody that wants to be snarky, um, and love, he's like, love well. Love well. Means- River, do you have anything you want to say? Uh- which means you have to love yourself in order to love others. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Love well, and you have to love yourself in order to love others. Very important. Yeah. Um, I just did, didn't want to leave River without asking him, do you have any final words you'd like to impart to people missing you? I'll be back. <laughs> and what do you mean by that? He says he already is. Oh, that's so funny. Hold on. Yeah, there's somebody out there surfing that's like him. Okay. Because yeah. people so I just saw somebody, you know, when we talked about who was who was, you know, the other person that we what is his James name? James Dean. Okay. We did have the experience of of talking to James Dean and asking him when he's gonna come back and he told us who, who he is. And I, we happen to know who that person is and we interviewed him and whatever, but all off camera because he's not interested in letting people know that he's back. Let's just put it that way. Living a happy life. And Bob Saget, we'll give you one, one last thought. Do you have something you want to say? It's so funny because he's like, he wins for the dumbest re-entry, like going back to home. Um, he's just so happy about that, but hold on. Laughter is great medicine. You laughter know, is such laugh, great medicine. Laughter is such great medicine. And, the, and it was funny because we I asked him for the punchline for a joke that Jennifer did not know the punchline. And it had to do with the, what, his stand-up when he would talk about a dog who was, you know, doing some, some weird act. And he gave it to Jennifer and she said, I'm not saying that. It was a typical Bob Saget response. All right. Um, Luana, is there any else, anything else you want to bring to the fore? I know I only got Jennifer for a few minutes left. Oh, actually I'm running late. You're running late. Okay. Well, let's thank everybody. Matthew, thank you for showing up. I really, is her picture still on your fridge? Who, Luana? 
Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm looking at it right now, actually. Oh, she says it's crooked. <laughs> it is. It is. Okay. Oh, oh, is that better? You happy now? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's not crooked if you're always in my heart. All right. Very good, Lou. Thank you for showing up on the Day of the Dead. Thank you, Matthew Perry. I I was I was kind of afraid he might show up, but I, I wasn't going to ask him. I didn't ask. I didn't ask. Didn't ask and, but, you know, I'm here. I'm like, okay. And then I asked Luana. I said, Luana, is there, you know, and again, it goes back to we're not profiting off. This is not, there was actually people who knew him who are friends that I've talked to that I, we're not making anything off of that. No, it, no. And the whole point is, we're and I don't ask. I don't ask. I didn't go and try to find him. He found me. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I know. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm mentioning it because and we asked the same questions to everybody, you know, who greeted you. And I was I figured that River would have shown up because you guys were close pals. I did not know they were close pals, by the way. So, uh, yeah, it's a lovely thing to learn. Anyway, we love you, Jennifer. Thank you for your gifts. We love really you. appreciate it. And Matthew, River and Bob and Luana. Thanks, guys, for showing up on our podcast. Love you. Bye. This has been Hacking the Afterlife podcast with Jennifer Schaefer. For more information, jenniferschaefer.com, martinizone.com, or richmartini.com. Hacking the Afterlife documentary is available on Gaia.com via Amazon Prime.